Hi, this is Vicki Gilforth Parnell, and I have come to share a word with you, but this is a word that the Lord gave me on 11 19 at 4.21 a.m. called Perilous Times, and it kept drawing me back to my old journals to the beginning. This is one of the first words that I had received about the end times. Now, I've spent many time with them that I recorded, that I journaled. I didn't always journal at first, but I do now. And Lord willing, I'm going to share that with you. Um, before we pray and before we start, just so I can answer this question to a lot of people instead of having to send out separate emails and all. I mean, a lot of people ask me, why does God give me so many dreams? Why does Jesus Christ give me so many dreams? You know, I could just answer and say, well, that's, you know, ask him. When I had this dream, this dream, 10, 11, 10, 19, at 408 a.m. called Dream of Truth and Evil. Now, I posted that around June, July of 2021 on Rumble. So it's been up for over two years. But in it, in the end of this dream, it, it tells it, I'm going to read it. I got it typed out. And he's talking about the dream. This dream child is one of many that you will dream. For I am speaking to my people, those who are diligently seeking my face once again, through dreams and visions. And it is time, child, for the prophets to start prophesying my words, my truths once again, regardless of whether or not men will receive them. He told me in 2019... 11, 10, 19, 408 a.m. when I was writing down this dream that this is one of many that you will dream. This dream child is one of many that you will dream. That's why I have dreams. I'm being obedient by sharing them. And I hope that answers that question for a lot of people that that wondered. It's not that, you know, I'm seeking God, give me dreams, give me dreams. No. He told me he would come to me with dreams and I was to share them. And whatever else he says to share and I will be obedient. Because in the end, if I reach just one for the glory of Jesus Christ, for the glory of God, and that's, that's what it's all about, reaching one. So let's pray and we will start this. Again, this is a word. And there's another one he's been laying heavy on my heart and going back to him. And um, if he leads, I do have some other dreams. And I will share as the Lord leads. Because in the end, it's all about him. It's all about our lovely Jesus Christ. All right, let's pray. In the Holy Spirit, I ask in Jesus Christ's name and Jesus that you would answer. That this prayer is led by you, sweet Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, I come in your name boldly. I come, Father God, to your throne room boldly in Jesus Christ's name. And I ask Jesus you would answer. And I ask it this way because John 14, 13 says that whatever you ask, we ask in the Father's name, in your name, I'm sorry, whatever we ask in your name, Jesus, you will do it so will glorify the Father. And then 14 says, what so we shall do in your name? We ask in your name. Whatever we ask in your name, you will do it. And that means what that's referring to is, is the children that are walking obedient to you, that are standing in faith, believing everything. Your word says, Father God, believe in every word of this Bible because this is you, the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. We believe it and live it. Ask and you shall receive. Matthew 7, 7, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I ask for this video to be covered under the barrier of invisibility and stealth. And I ask for the no retaliation clause to be to be activated, to be inserted, to become alive, Father. What I've already spoken in Jesus Christ's name with no backlash and no interference from the kingdom of darkness. And if they even have a thought, I'm asking that you would immediately send down judgment, have angels bring them up before the courts of heaven. And you deal fairly and justly as only you can, Father, because you will weigh all sides. You will weigh it all, and you will do only as you can do, right and righteously. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray and ask. 
I also right now bind the spirit of interference and its sub-demons, the spirit of retaliation and its sub-demons, backlash and such like, binding them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I bind every strong man been assigned to my life, this ministry, my families, in Jesus Christ's name. The strong men of this county, the strong men of the state, the strong men of each state in the United States of America and wherever else may be listening in Jesus Christ name that's the authority we have in Jesus Christ I'm asking you dispatch and have angels do what needs to be done to have them bound I want them please and thank you muted deaf and dumb in Jesus Christ name so no interference can occur now I break every spell every curse every vex every hex incantation whatever words whatever form of communication whether that be hands or whether it be spoken or written that is of ill intent that's being assigned against me my family this ministry all the people that are listening all the people that are reading father god in the name of jesus i canceled them jesus christ i'm asking you dispatch what needs to be done in Jesus Christ to see that these are canceled in the authority of Jesus Christ so that my prayers will not only be powerful in your name, but will allow you to glorify the Father and all that's done. I'm understanding that's so important because Father God sits on the throne reigning and ruling in righteousness. Righteousness, holiness. Without holiness, no man. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. And we are holy through the blood of Jesus and through that constant repenting, that walking in obedience and doing as he has called us to do. We are children of the Most High God. Now, Lord, I cancel and break everything under the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ, I'm asking your name to seal this all in your blood so that everything that is broken will not set off any traps or triggers and that every charm and such like in Jesus Christ's name that may be past, present, and future in all existence known to God because Father God, you exist everywhere. Every past, present, future, every place, every time, you exist everywhere. I deprogram these charms and such like that may have been inserted or set on triggers or whatever the de the thing, Father, or that would try to be sent afterwards. I hereby automatically deprogram them in the name and authority of Jesus Christ, dismantling the demons inside of them, the spirits inside of them, canceling their assignment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and for the glory of God, for the kingdom of God. And I bind you in everlasting chains, every one of you, and everyone that's going to be assigned, that's going to try to, to rise up. I bind you now, and this is to go in effect immediately upon you trying to resist what, what I have declared and decree. You shall not interfere. You shall not retaliate. You shall not give any backlash in the name of Jesus Christ. I wrap you in everlasting chains according to Jude. So six, one, six, there's only one chapter in Jude. I pike you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Father God, you said, behold, I give unto you power to tread. Jesus said, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. I take that literally. And for those of you that saying, she said, God, it says in John 10, 30, I and my father are one. So there you go, in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, I praise you. Now I take the sword of the Spirit. I cut off the hands, the feet. I gut you from head to toe, in Jesus Christ's name. I pull out your tongue, and you will stop speaking in Jesus' name. And I will run my sword through the ear. I cut your, your tongue off with the sword of the Spirit. Cut your nose off, your ears and I run the hot rod of iron enhanced with the fire of Almighty God through your third eye, through your supernatural eye, where you, where you do your supernatural abilities in Jesus Christ's name. I run this through you in Jesus Christ's name. And now I cast you into the abyss, and I pray and ask, Father God, you set it on fire. Jesus Christ, I'm asking you, set it on fire, as hot as the lake of fire as can be, as close to that fire, in Jesus Christ's name, with heavy, loads and grievous torment with no no hope of ever being reassigned unless you need it to be so 
Father God, or Jesus Christ. I ask you send this to the north, south, east, west of every direction, every location. Above ground, ab above ground, above sea, below, Father, within the earth, above the earth, wherever it needs to go. I, I had no intentions myself, Father, of pulling something out from the year 2019, but you weighed it heavy on my heart last night, and I prayed on it all day. So I'm going to release this in the authority of Jesus Christ. And I say again, Father God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, if I'm not speaking in your name, I'm asking you shut me down. Because I'm not here for likes. I'm not here. I'm not here for my own gain. I would have preferred to be like so many others that sat behind a Bible or sat behind a picture or something and not have my face known. But you said no, so here I am. We're going to do it as you say, regardless. Because it's not about me. It's all about you. So in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who came in the flesh as man, I deliver your words as you have ordered me to do. Let your perfect will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in all things. And I understand there's no greater name and there's no greater power and there's no greater man that can that's ever walked or will walk. Jesus, you are God and man. Jesus, you are the most powerful being in creation, in the universe, in existence. I'll stick with you. I love you, Jesus. Jesus Christ, I love you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Excuse me. I love you, Lord, and I praise you. And for those of you, do I say that or not, Lord? Those of you that keep saying you're concerned for my salvation, understand this. I have accepted Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, as my Lord and Savior. I answer to Him and Him alone. I appreciate the concern if it's truly felt. But otherwise, don't waste my time. I answer to Jesus Christ, not you. I answer to Jesus Christ alone. He knows my heart. Or you think you know. You think you know my heart. And it's not that I'm, I'm upset or anything, but I'm seeing this happen to so many other brothers and sisters. Remember, with what meat you judge, you shall receive. And you better make sure when you're speaking in Jesus Christ, when you're speaking in Jesus, when you're speaking in Yeshua, when you're speaking in Yeshua, Hashem, I can't even say it, Hamashiach, forgive me, Lord, I have to have it in front of me to be able to say it. Or Jesus Christ, Father God of heaven, Jehovah, you better make sure your words are coming from him. As for me, I'm good. He fights my battles. All right. Didn't know that was coming. Here we go. Again, today is 11 8 23. This was 11 2 19 at 4 21 a.m. titled Perilous Times. And this is when he called me child. As our relationship grew closer, he started calling me daughter. And he had called me to him. And this is my actual journal entry. This is the discussion that I had with Jesus Christ on this day. I'm here, Jesus. I have heard you calling unto me. What is it you wish to say this morning? Perilous times, child. Perilous times are coming fast upon the face of the earth. No longer will I sit at the door of man's heart, men's hearts and beg unto them to let me in. It's time, excuse me, it is time, child, for man to see the full wrath of my Father God against the wickedness and the evil of the world you now live in. The time of mercy and grace is almost expired, and the time of judgment is fast approaching. The sands of time are barely dribbling and have almost emptied completely. Run, ye inhabitants of the earth, and howl, for your sins have been exposed. You have been weighed in the balance, and you have been found sadly lacking. O oh God, have mercy on us still. Child, 
As I have told you before, when Father God steps off his throne of grace and mercy and steps onto the seat of judgment, there will be no mercy given any longer. Cry ye inhabitants, weep and howl, for woe to you all, not one shall be unaffected. Wars upon wars and rumors of wars shall take place in the last days. Disaster upon disaster shall befall all of mankind. Nature's fury shall be unleashed as storm after storm rips across land in land and seas. What else, Jesus, will happen? And what can we do to possibly stop these things from taking place? Child, mankind has been warned over and over again, all down throughout the ages. There will be no stopping this time of judgment. Every word that has been spoken shall come to pass. You were all warned to get your hearts right, for judgment was coming, and now it's almost upon you. What must we do, Jesus Christ? Pray, child. Pray for the lost while there's still time, for soon the doorway to salvation will close to a crack, and very few will find their way therein. You must not hesitate to speak of my gift of salvation to all you meet. You must reach the lost at all cost. Do not let doubt at my abilities sway you for nothing. Nothing, child, is impossible for me to do on your behalf. Do not listen to those who would try to shove me back into a box, only taking me out when they choose for me to work on their behalf. I am all-powerful. I have existed before time began. The only things that I can't possibly do is lie, child, or do anything that would violate my holy nature. But besides these things, there's nothing, nothing impossible for me. If a man who has stopped believing in my capabilities, excuse me, it is man who has stopped believing in my capabilities, for I have not changed. I will never change, for I am constant. Remove yourself, child, no matter how much it hurts, from those who would continually speak doubt and disbelief into your spirit. Unbelief will kill your dreams, if you let it, child. All power is given unto me, for I am Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, and I will make myself known to all who desire to have intimate relationships with me. I am not a trophy that you put up on your shelf to display once you've accepted me as your Savior. For too long man has tied my hands through lack of belief and fear of the unknown, choosing rather to live in safety in their comfort zone. Child, it is as you heard the preacher preach last night on your TV. Faith means taking risks. Stepping out into the unknown when I ask it of you. And by taking that risk, that step of faith, you open the door for the impossible to take place within your lives. It's really quite simple, child. It is man who makes it difficult. Child, when you begin stepping out into faith, into the unknown, You've activated your faith and allowed me to start operating the impossible in your life. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Child, it was never impossible for me to heal you. But your previous doubt and unbelief hindered me somewhat in tying my hands. But when you started stepping out in faith and started taking the risks of walking into the unknown, in blind faith in me, you unlocked all hindrances that might have delayed your healing even further. I left part of that out, I'm sorry. But when you started, at least help me read this right, <laughs> sorry. But when you started stepping out in faith and started taking the risk of walking into the unknown in blind faith in me, you unlocked all hindrances from coming that might have delayed your healing even further. 
Sorry about that. Man has the mindset today that all I do is save. Salvation is the most important gift that I offer, but it is not the only one. Do not limit my abilities because you choose not to believe me capable of anything more. For I am Jehovah God's son, and all things are possible to him that believes in me. You have done as my holy scripture instructed you, and you have searched the scriptures, my scriptures. And I have given unto you irrefutable proof, for I am no respect of person. And I will come to man and speak face to face with him, sometimes audibly and sometimes not. What is it to man if I so choose to speak to my children on a one-by-one -one basis? I am God, and I am not bound by what man thinks of how I should do things. The fact is that I love all men equally, and this kind of relationship is available to all who diligently seek me and my ways, who surrender every part of their life to me. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will go with you even to the ends of the world when you walk in my ways and live wholly before me. Nothing shall be impossible unto you when you call on me and activate your faith through my name. Here are the scriptures. Exodus 33, 1. John 14, 6. Romans 2, 11. Hebrews 13.8 Deuteronomy 31.6 and 8 2 Timothy 3.1 Hebrews 4.16 Numbers 12.7-8 and John 10.30 And I'm asking you, as I do all the others, asking you to take this to our lovely Jesus Christ in prayer. Don't take my word. Don't take anybody's word. If you're living on taking anybody else's word and not going before Jesus Christ and asking his name, is this of you or not? Then you might find yourself in some error. Or you may find yourself misunderstanding or misinterpreting something. The word may be sound, but if you just assume, never assume. If you assume it means something, without ever seeking the Lord to find out exactly what it means, you might step off into error. That's why you ask the Holy Spirit to reveal, as John 14, 6 says, He is a teacher and He will bring all things to remembrance of what Jesus has spoken. But pray about that also. And understand this, please. Your comments, ill comments, and things don't really get to me. But it gets me concerned for your souls. But I do get righteously angry when I see how you're tearing down your brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And understand, I don't claim to be nothing but a daughter, a child of God who when the Lord called me to do something with much prayer and much fasting and much reading and much much on my knees when he told me that the ones he's calling are not rising up not answering the call then I chose to do it that's all I am a daughter of God willing to do whatever he wants me to do I will not put a title upon myself because I am the least of the least and a servant to all and that is the way the Lord has told me I am a daughter of the kingdom of heaven I have been bought and paid for by the price and that blood that Jesus Christ shed if you could just get a tiny understanding of what our loving Savior did for us, the price he paid, the torture he went through, then maybe you'd be willing to lay down your life and follow him. All right. With that being said, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're backslidden, 
it's time to come home. We're not promised tomorrow. I know people get tired of hearing that, but how many people lost their life today that thought making plans for the next day or the next week, next month? In J, I think it's in James where it says, if the Lord be willing is how you're supposed to say, then we'll do this and we'll do that. That's why you hear me say a lot, Lord willing. If the Lord be willing, and I will not commit to something if I don't know if I can be there. I will say, if the Lord be willing, I will try. But to say, I will be there, that only God knows. Jesus Christ knows. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I ask you to accept him into your heart. You need a Savior. You need Jesus Christ who loves you. Who loves you more than anyone else. Those drugs don't love you. Those abusive parents or husband or wife don't love you. Girlfriend, boyfriend. Nobody can love you like Jesus Christ. The one who created you. Please say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus. I repent. Of all my sins. And I ask that you wash me clean. With your precious holy. Righteous blood. I believe you came to this earth. By miraculous virgin birth. And I believe that you died on the cross after going through torture for me. You gave your life, but you rose victorious in three days so I could live victorious in the power of your name, Jesus Christ. Come wash me clean and forgive me. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior, my Master, in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's that simple. It's that simple because there's nothing that you can do to earn salvation. It's by grace. But you have to confess it and believe it. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe that is in Romans 10, 13, I think. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, that God has raised him for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read that one. That one needs to be accurate. I'm reading from Romans 10, verse 9. I think it may, it may read 10, um, 10 also. Verse 9, it's as simple. That if thou shalt confess with th thy mouth, the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation you accept him you confess it you believe it and 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and the Lord referring to Jesus Christ and we know it is Jesus Christ not just Jesus because in verse 4 above it it mentions Christ for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth you can still pray in Jesus name when you yourself know it's Jesus Christ but understand this the power and authority is in the name Jesus Christ, Jesus the Anointed One, Jesus that come from God, Jesus Christ. But God will meet you at your faith until you understand the full power that's in that name. Until you understand that it's God Almighty, that it's the Holy Spirit, and it's Jesus Christ himself, who, by the way, has power over the angels, so all of heaven's forces, in the name Jesus Christ. He's going to meet you where your faith is. 
That's why until for me, I get the full understanding of the power of his name. He's taken me through step by step. You know, that's why he's showing me exposing the tricks of the enemy. Spells and curses have to be broken of the enemy. I'm not telling you how to cast spells and curses. I have no idea how to do that. I'm telling you in Jesus Christ's name, you can break them of the enemy's powers, their witchcraft powers, their familiar spirits. You can bind all this. He, he showed me how to deprogram charms and such like because I did not have the full understanding of what his name was doing and was capable of. We know it's all powerful, but we have to have that understanding with it really understanding okay his name is all powerful it can do this but what does that really mean so it gets in your spirit so when you speak it you know the authority behind it and you know exactly what it's accomplishing it's decimating the kingdom of darkness and that's what we're called to do we're called in jesus christ's name to give this beautiful glorious gift of salvation to take it across the land take it down the street take it wherever then we're here to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ we're supposed to you know, feed the sick feed the hungry pray for the sick pray for the sick we're supposed to heal the sick let's go past it we're supposed to heal the sick in Jesus Christ's name because it's not us it's the power and authority of his name Do we understand? We pray. We all pray in Jesus Christ's name. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. But do we really believe we have the power in Jesus Christ's name to heal them? Yes, I do. Sometimes, though, the Lord will say, be it according to your faith. And then sometimes, my faith. He'll meet you at your faith. All right. Praise the Lord. Didn't know I was going there. I ramble. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I don't. Lord, forgive me. I don't apologize for saying anything he leads me to say. If you don't have a Bible, I ask that you please get you a physical Bible. Because in, in the end, I take comfort in just holding my Bible. But you never know what's going to happen in this world, the way things are going. And the physical Bible you can carry with you, you can have with you. I don't know what's going on with this light. There's this light and just one light here. Oh, there's a little bitty light over there. But that's, that's it. It just seems to be. Praise the Lord. With that being said, please, please, please. Get you a Bible, but let the Holy Spirit lead you which one. And if you've never read the Bible before, then I would recommend you start with John and know your Savior. Get to know your Savior, Jesus Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John of the New Testament. And for those of you that's feeling discouraged, those of you that's feeling like you're all alone or you're being hit, know that Jesus Christ loves you and you are not alone. Email upon email upon email, request upon request upon request. The children of God are being bashed left and right, front and back. Hold on. Hold on. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. For all of you that's fighting, all of you that's fighting, we need to be reminded of this. I can turn my page. Jesus Christ's name. Is it 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians? Maybe it's 2 Corinthians. Sorry about that. I may have to look it up just to make sure I give you the right one. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I did not. He was going to have me do this. I can't get out. I'm in 2 Corinthians. <laughs> so, Jesus, help me. 
I don't like to do that, but right now I don't have anything to get my... Lord, I praise you. We have got to understand Jesus Christ has made a way. His grace is sufficient for you. And he has made a way. All right. If you're struggling, understand this. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will with the temptation, the temptation's not from God, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So no matter what you're, you're facing, no matter what you're being tempted with, if you're if you're being sought on every side and you're tempted to quit, if you're being, you know, you, you, you're, you're ready to just throw in the towel, there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. In other words, he restrains, restrains the enemy but will with the temptation, the trial that you're doing, will make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. He is faithful. He is faithful. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. All right, I feel like that's all I need to say. Right, if you want to contact me, I am getting through the emails as fast as I can. Understand again, a lot of them I will not be responding to. I'm just praying. I'm just praying. Because I am also typing up the PDFs and uh, the, the massive number that's been removed out of the ebooks and off the websites. I'm having to retype. But God is faithful. And I will get them done in Jesus Christ's name as He leads, when He wants them done. And I'm working on trying to redo the ebooks to try to get them up where you're more able to get to them. And I apologize um, in, on the the website. I understand when looking through the cell phone um, on uh, which one the ebook page. Some of the things are really off. That is because I did not group them. I forgot to group them on the the website. Yes, I'm doing the website too. But I would like to just make a note when the website was created. It was created by a, a beautiful lady named Charlotte. And she volunteered and, and did it, and it was fantastic. But the Lord had called her to go somewhere else to do some other things. But I'm, I'm very grateful for what she has done. She was a very beautiful lady, just a beautiful soul. But you know how how things work out. you got to let the good ones go, too. All right. God bless. Stay under the blood. And the email is pray dot eight five six myjesus at gmail.com and for those of you that's sending requests about scriptures being off in the pdfs there was a lot of things going on you can try listening to the videos because 99% of the time or the majority of the time I'll say when I go back to check I can pull them straight off the video so know this, if you send me requests about the PDF, the on the PDFs of Scripture being off, which is important to have the correct Scriptures, I understand that. But that's not my first priority. It's those that's fighting, 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 fighting for the loss, those that are dealing with sickness, those that are fighting witchcraft, those that are desperate, those come first. So eventually I will get to the others as the Holy Spirit leads in Jesus Christ's name. I'm just taking it as he leads. I'm not letting it worry me. Because in the end, it's his site, his website. It's his other media sites, YouTube, and not mine. Not mine. It's all for his glory. What he wants will happen. And that's why we got to be about life. We be obedient. We do all we know to do in his name and, and do as he calls us. If he doesn't tell us anything else to do, then you wait. And I've learned praising him while waiting is the best thing to do. 
but I would like I would like to ask besides praying for me and my family in this ministry because we pray for everybody my son and I especially we, we pray for all understand this though I know the Lord's got me but there are many out there that start that's that's standing out that are speaking what Jesus Christ said now I don't listen to other people unless the Lord tells me I don't listen to anything but I know in my spirit when he leads me to pray for somebody, if it just passes, like if I click on something like on YouTube and the Lord draws my attention to a, a face, he'll say, pray for this one. And then he'll say, they're being attacked, maliciously attacked. We're to pray for one another. Not only your family, your church members, pray for the pastors, pray for the evangelist, Pray for your leaders. Pray for your enemies. Bless them that curse you. When I get up here and say, it's not just me speaking. I pray daily for my enemies. I didn't make you my enemies. You chose to be my enemies. But I, also, I always pray, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, Jesus Christ, don't hold these things to their charge on my account. I ask for windows and doors of opportunity and mercy. I ask for mercy so that if they're savable, they have every opportunity. They persecuted Jesus Christ. So they're going to persecute me. They're going to persecute you if you truly are a child of God. But we're to pray for one another. <laughs> That's serious. You know, even if you, you comment, this is how serious it is. If you comment to somebody that has a prayer request, I'm going to use Facebook, for example, and you say praying, but you don't stop and pray at that moment, but go on. You just lied. Praying means I'm praying, not praying later. You've got to do as you're saying. You've got to be the example of Jesus Christ. Pray ye one for another. How many of you, when you put praying on a comment, whether it's Telegram, whether it's Facebook or something, with all intentions of praying, but as soon as you get done scrolling, you are forgotten and you walk away. Pray ye one for another that you might be healed. James 5.16 We're to live by a higher standard than the world. We're to live by Jesus Christ's standards, Father God in heaven's standards. Be ye holy as I am holy. And it's possible it would not be written in the scriptures. All right, God bless. Stay under the blood. And Lord willing, um, I've had several dreams. And yes, I do dream every night just about it. I've had three or four nights last month. I actually didn't dream that I was under under heavy warfare and the Lord allowed me to sleep. He's a good God. Allowed me to sleep without dreaming. Let me specify that. So, and if you have an issue with me dreaming or getting dreams, please take it to Jesus Christ. Because again, all I can tell you is he told me, this dream child is one of many that you will dream. So you need to ask him why he selected me. I choose to be obedient and pay the cost. Are you? Bye-bye. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is coming.